Hello students. So we are continuing with nervous system and today let's do earthworm. nervous system so we had started first with hydra and we saw that the nervous system is not so advanced it's quite primitive but in the case of earthworm it's much more developed the earthworm is let us write over here is an invertebrate and let us write over here a one or two common features of nervous systems in invertebrates first of all the nervous system is ventral it's ventrally located it is double and it is solid whereas in case of all the chordates or all the vertebrates it is always dorsal in position it is single and there is we say it is hollow because there is and op op openings or these are spaces inside the nerve cord you will find that there are spaces and those spaces are filled with the fluid called ependyma okay the fluid is filled with ependyma so these are the differences between invertebrates and chordates and or rather you can put over here vertebrates that this is ventral in position this is dorsal in position always double and this is single solid and hollow now let us start with earthworm so in the central nervous system of the earthworm there will be a pair of supra pharyngeal ganglia sub pharyngeal ganglia
supra pharyngeal ganglia sub pharyngeal ganglia circum pharyngeal connective So these three will constitute nerve ring, and this is in segment three. So the essential feature of the central nervous system is this nerve ring, and nerve ring is present in. near the pharynx at the segment number 3 which we have marked over here which are made up of suprapharyngeal ganglia two of them subpharyngeal ganglia two of them and circumpharyngeal connectives on both on either side and then what happens is that it will continue further in this manner it will keep continuing so this is the nerve cord which is ventral in position and this is segmental ganglion so this will continue as the ventral nerve cord and it is this ventral nerve cord which is double solid with and ventral both all the three and five every segment will have ganglion what is a ganglion it's a collection of cytons is a collection of the cytons of nerve cells so that's why it becomes so this is central nervous system and in peripheral nervous system so there are these nerves which are coming out from there so 
So all these are peripheral nerves. Peripheral nerves means nerves from ganglia of central nervous system. So from each ganglion there are several nerves and these nerves they will supply to different organs nearby so the peripheral nerves about 8 to 10 pairs of them from the suprapharyngeal ganglion they will supply to the head part to the anterior part which is so sensitive and which is so important so to all those parts that will supply similarly from the connectives the, the circumpharyngeal connective on either side they will be peripheral nerves that supply to pharynx etc there will be three to four such pairs of peripheral nerves in the subpharyngeal ganglia and every segment now will have a segmental ganglia and along from the segmental ganglion there will be three pairs of peripheral nerves which are supplying to that region. So this is how it will start from one and go to the other. So in earthworm there is actually central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, also there is sympathetic nervous system. which are autonomic fibers and they are associated with this. So earthworm is quite well developed nervous system. Also let us just state that suppose we are taking cross section of the earthworm. I am just showing a simple diagram a cross section of the earthworm near the nervous system we will find that these are the two nerve cords I am actually taking a section of that end of the nerve cord TS of nerve cord so when we say that ventral nerve cord is double so here these are the two nerve cords so this is nerve cord This is also nerve cord. And there is a lot of tissues here like perineurium etc. All those are there. But the important part which I wanted to mention to you is that here we will get something which is called as giant nerve fibers so earthworm has also got over here giant when we use the word it does not mean that they are very uh, huge they are very long and from they are almost from anterior to posterior very long cords from anterior to posterior so this is very useful in end to end conduction that's why an earthworm can it really move very fast and it can sometimes even jump almost jump a couple of inches 
when the earthworm is really threatened and it can move very fast because of the giant nerve fibers so these are like highways which allow for very quick a highway generally allows very quick passageway without many internal roads something very similar to that giant nerve fibers they are within the nerve cord and they are, they are present from anterior to posterior that means the earthworm can respond very quickly and this these are called as highways of end to end conduction and these are quite well researched so this is another special feature of the earthworm is that they have got giant nerve fibers so earthworm nervous system is very well developed so with that we come to the end of this thank you